Now let's take a look at the microphone device characteristics as well as two interface circuits for the audio input as well as the analog input. Here's the microphone that's included with the MyRio starter kit. This is the analog device's ADMP504. It's the ultra-low noise microphone. Let's take a look at some of the features of this microphone. As included with the starter kit, it's, in, it's already packaged on the dip chip carrier. The microphone itself is on the underside of the carrier, the small metal device. The chip carrier includes a hole for the microphone sound port. Let's review some of the features of the ADMP504. The mic has full frequency range, 100 hertz to 20 kilohertz, and it includes a MEMS mic and a preamplifier. MEMS is an abbreviation for Micro Electromechanical Systems. This mic requires a 3.3 volt power supply. It cannot use a 5 volt supply. That would be too much. So 3.3 only. The output impedance of the mic is 200 ohms. It produces a signal of up to plus minus 0.25 volts. And that signal is sitting on a DC offset of 0.8 volts. Let's take a look at the pinout for this chip carrier. As viewed from the top, you can identify a square solder pad. All the rest are round. And this square pad is the output. The one next door is ground. Up here we have VDD. Again, that needs to be 3.3 volts. And this pad is a no connect signal. Now let's take a look at some considerations for the design of the interface circuit. I'll begin with the microphone and would like to show you how you can arrive either at the MXP analog input or the audio input. The audio input is located right here, requires an eighth inch stereo jack connection. The analog inputs on the MXP side appear on both the A and B connectors and we have four possible analog inputs on each connector. Now to decide how to design the interface circuit we need to know a little bit more details about the destinations. 0 to 5 volts for the analog inputs and then minus 2.5 to plus 2.5 volts or 0 DC offset when using the audio in. The analog input needs 2.5 volts DC offset. Back here at the signal source, we have the microphone producing plus minus 0.25 volts sitting on a 0.8 volt DC offset. Now, taking into account these facts, I will propose that we use an inverting amplifier with a DC blocking capacitor. The blocking capacitor will take care of removing the 0.8 volt DC offset, and from there we can concentrate on specifying the gain magnitude that we need for the amplifier. We have 0.25 volts going in. We'd like a 2.5 volt range coming out. That suggests that we need a gain of 10. And we can accomplish that by choosing R2 to be 10 times that of R1. As we look at the difference between the analog input and the output audio input, we see that it's really at this point revolves around the offset voltage. If we ground this end of the op amp, we produce a zero DC offset. To accomplish the 2.5 volt DC offset, we simply need to raise the non-inverting terminal up to 2.5 volts. We can accomplish that with a voltage divider based on two equal valued resistors attached to the five volt source. Here the DC blocking capacitor and resistor R1 establish a low cut frequency of 1 over 2 pi times R1C1. We need this value to be less than 100 hertz. In terms of choosing the op amp, if we want the ability to swing both positive and negative, we will need to make use of the dual supply op amp. And the OP37 in the MyRio starter kit would be an excellent choice here. When going to the analog in, however, we need just a single supply but we need to be able to go from the zero volt rail to the five volt rail. Hence, we need a rail to rail op amp. That gives us an output swing from zero to five. 
and the analog devices 808541, also in the starter kit, would be a good choice here. Now, putting together all of these various design equations, looks like one microfarad, 10K, and 100K solves the constraints that we need. 10K works nicely for the equal valued resistors in the voltage divider. All right, here's the completed circuit for the audio in interface. I'm making use of the dual power supplies on the MSP or C connector. The data sheet for the ADM P504 recommends a 0.1 microfarad power supply bypass capacitor to reduce signal noise. Also, I'll note that the one microfarad capacitor, it's, you want to make sure you're observing the polarity on that device. And again, we're using the OP37 dual supply op amp in this case. Here's the interface circuit when you're going to the analog input. Again, fairly similar in general. Uh, the area that I'm showing here is exactly the same. Now I'm using the 5 volt supply on the MXP B connector. Here you'll also notice the voltage divider that, that lifts up the ground to one half the supply voltage. 